I was on a photo walk and talked about why 40 millimeter lens is my favorite lens for street photography. And I came across this guy. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. The photographing. Usually in these type of situations, I take one photograph and just, you know, turn away and hope that everything goes well. But on this time, I had a chance to stay a bit longer around this guy and I took four photographs. And here are the four in the order of making these images. The order that I would show these images is this. As you know, this is a bit different if you have watched my previous videos about a story of an image. This is a little bit different, but uh, don't worry, I will pick the image that I like the most from these four images. But I thought it would be interesting to talk about all these four because it was a little bit different situation. And also there are a lot to talk about these four images because they are so different, even though they're taken in the same situation. And as you can see from the footage, he did not pay any attention to me. He probably knew that I was there, but he didn't care that I was photographing. And it, di it did not affect the photographing itself at all. So the photographs, are genuine documents what would have happened if I was not there. I think that guy would have probably behaved the same way because he did not pay any attention to me. I don't know, to be honest, if he even noticed that I was there. He was so concentrated talking on the phone. The photographs. This photograph is something that I would call the establishing shot. It shows the surroundings where the guy was talking on the phone. It shows the street corner, it shows some buildings and some other people walking around. And, and as you see, not very crowded in downtown Helsinki during a day. There are not too many people walking around, which is in a way a sad thing because the city center has not that many people walking around. And of course, the stores are a bit struggling there because, you know, lack of people. But anyways, and the, then the second shot is a bit closer. And I think this is uh, nice because it shows some expression on his face and it's a bit closer, but still it shows the surroundings. And here the 40 millimeter lens is, I think is really nice because it's, it's not too wide, but not too tight. So it will show the surroundings, even though I'm pretty close to the guy. And I think this uh, proves, at least for me, that the 40 millimeter lens is the best choice, at least for my style of photography. The third shot here is uh, a tight shot too, even though it shows the full body of the guy, it's still quite tight because it doesn't so show the surroundings that much. And as a standalone photograph, I don't think this is very good. This is the weakest one of all of these four. And because, you know, it's um, it doesn't tell that much. But as a additional photograph to the three others in part of that series, I think it makes a lot of sense because it kind of tells us that the guy was talking on the phone for a long, long time because he had to lean on the wall. And it usually happens. And most likely, if we look at his face and the position and everything, he is listening. So that tells or adds to the story if we pick all these four images. And then this fourth one is a really tight, close shot, which was you know, reacting when he turned around and started walking and I reacted quickly to take this image. As a standalone photograph, I think this is very strong. It shows the kind of intense nature of the phone call, which I didn't hear, so I don't know if it was, but that that's the intention that, or, or the story in this image, even though there's a slight smile on his face. So it might not be the whole situation or the whole truth that we think that it was a very intense phone call, even though he was moving quite a bit around. So it, it probably was. Before we get into the editing part, a few words about the Global Photo Project. Let's make history on the 19th of August this year and take photographs on that particular day because it's a birthday of photography. The end result will be a book that I will collect all your images that you have sent to me. If you want to be part of that, check out the Global Photo Project website and register and get all the extra information that you need for that special day. Join us and Let's make some history. But now back to the topic of this video and the editing part. When I saw this, I immediately knew that it's going to be black and white. This weren't any good in, in color as you see from this. And what comes to editing, of course, I converted them to black and white, added some contrast with the curves 
and then adjusted the uh, highlights. That's the, probably the biggest thing that I did is lower the highlights all the way down to minus 100. And the editing on all these images is exactly the same. They didn't need to do any separate editing, so it was really fast to edit these. And as you've seen these uh, story of images videos before, you know that I don't edit that much. Sometimes a little bit more, but on this particular case, I didn't have to edit that much because one thing was that it was an overcast weather, so the exposure and, and the light was exactly the same and the shadows were about the same. So it was very easy to, to uh, edit these images. The uh, uh, exposure on this was 125th of a second. And it was F10 and I used auto ISO. And I had the camera on P mode. And then I had the minimum shutter speed was set to 1. 125th of a second and I also use the depth of field priority so that it will choose as small uh, aperture as possible. This is the my go-to settings on my Ricoh GR3X which was the camera that I used on this one and uh, it's just me the best. It's very easy to just you know point and shoot kind of way and of course if I need to do any exposure compensation I have it on the back wheel and on this particular case I did not use snap focus which I sometimes use I turned it off because I was able to take several photos and wasn't really sure about the distance that I'm going to make so I just turned it off this time but usually to be honest I've been using it makes everything so much easier and then the best of these four I think these four images go together and as I already talked about the image images itself these two images kind of like add to the story but these two are the best ones in my opinion and uh, I picked this one and the reason is that this image takes me back or the style and the, the thing and the vibes that I had 15 years back when I used to do this type of street photography quite a lot black and white raw uh, street portraits and the style and everything you know was about the same that I had back then which I enjoyed quite a bit and then you know for some reason I stopped and now I might pick it up because it is in the back of my mind uh, something that I want to do in the future a bit more but I know that you probably like this one better because it's it's more a standard photograph a class more more of a classical street photograph and uh, that's why I chose it to be the thumbnail which was a a little bit different from the other similar videos that I've made about the story of an image. I've already also also all the time all every time had the image that was the image as my thumbnail. But I think that you like this a bit more than the one that I choose. And here is an interesting thing about the choosing the image. I've, many times I've said that you have to take distance from the actual time when you were shooting the image. So look look the images like a week or two after and, and see if you feel the same way and I took this image actually yesterday when I when I filmed this this video so I have a very close connection to the actual time when I was making the image and it'd be interesting to see in a couple of weeks if I will shift my ideas to this one it's kind of like a human thing that we are very connected to the actual time of shooting and this time the things that remind me from the past. But th this is really interesting and if you want to learn more about the other images that I've that I've made because it's a series of, of things that I make and it has been really good for my photography because for two things. First of all I need to really think about my images and go through them and analyze my photography and that will of course make me better I hope. And the other thing is that kind of drives me to make those images too because I have to because I'm trying to make this once a month and you can watch them from there. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.